She was perhaps the biggest star of the 20th century, Marilyn Monroe. Countless books, articles, and movies have chronicled her life, but even now, new secrets are just starting to come out. The new issue of Vanity Fair magazine has uncovered a treasure trove of information about the Hollywood icon. Sam Kashner is a contributing editor at the magazine. Good morning to you, Sam. Good morning. Before we get to what was found, how could this have been hidden for so long, so all of these documents, all of this material? Well, it was the biggest uh, mystery uh, after Monroe's death, what happened to the two filing cabinets that um, Frank Sinatra, in fact, had encouraged her to get uh, so that she could, in, in, his, in his words, sleep better at night knowing that her papers and her personal effects were all um, tucked in safely. And, um, but they disappeared. The two filing cabinets within hours or days after her death um, uh, just vanished. And no one knew what had happened to them. Did the Kennedys destroy them? Did DiMaggio take them away? There were all sorts of theories at the time. Right, exactly. So they finally, 45 years later, after her death, they turned up in a, in a suburban house in Los Angeles. And they had actually been taken by her assistant, somebody that Joe DiMaggio had placed in the home, at the, the assistant who had actually been taking care of her mom, and I guess when Marilyn died, she wanted something back. So right. she took it, maybe to cash in on it, not clear. But when you actually saw these, these treasures in this cabinet, the, yes. the kinds of stuff, beginning with the number of receipts, she kept all of her receipts. There was a receipt from Elizabeth Arden for false eyelashes, right. for perfume, records, books, three volumes on Sigmund Freud yeah. that she had purchased, using the last name Miller, as in Arthur Miller, one of her husbands. Exactly. The insight into her from looking at those receipts. Well, she was a very complicated person. I don't think we'll ever really quite understand her, you know, even though you could track her life as she lived it uh, in all of this paperwork, as you say. Um, and, uh, you know, in a way, Marilyn Monroe didn't exist. I mean, she was a creation, you know, a, a character that Norma Jean created. And you can, see, you can see these two different people in the archive. You can see the Norma Jean who's trying to improve her mind, uh, buying books, listening to music, um, and Marilyn, you know, the movie star. Buying um, the eyelashes. Exactly, the, the eyelashes, the, the um, sunglasses, all the receipts for clothing and furs and things like that. There were also bank statements and it's very interesting because she was extremely generous with Arthur Miller basically supporting him during their marriage. He was a writer, she's right. a movie star. Exactly. But her finances were not in good shape at the time of her death. No, I mean she was cash poor when she died. Um, I mean uh, part of the doc, you know, part of the archive has some interesting documents an offer from Las Vegas for example uh, to perform there for $100,000. She was going to still make movies and make money but she died cash poor. Um, she was very generous with her friends and the people who worked for her. She also um, left behind letters, some of them handwritten, some of them typed. Yes. What did they say about her to you? Well, she was a wonderful writer, which I think explains why writers have always loved her and been attracted to her. Um, she was a whimsical writer as well. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, ab absolutely. And in fact, uh, one of the great discoveries in the archive uh, are letters she wrote to Arthur Miller's sons, uh, Arthur Miller's son and, and daughter, his children, um, but written in the voice of the family dog, Hugo, uh, written to them up in summer camp. And, but she found a very clever way of talking about her life with Miller, but in a way the children could understand uh, through the voice of the family dog. It actually would make a great children's series, you know. There have been so many um, theories about her and the Kennedy brothers, mm -hmm. John and Robert, President yeah. Kennedy and, and Senator Kennedy. Any letters found either written from any of the Kennedys to her or letters she had drafted to a Kennedy? Well, I didn't see them. But Mark Anderson, the, f the photographer who, who was hired um, to photograph every piece uh, of paper in the archive, um, he definitely did see uh, several letters uh, from and to the Kennedy family. And, and I want to end on that, the photo that she, of all the photos taken of her, the one she loved the most was one she carried around in her purse, I understand, yes. every day. What, what's the story behind that picture? Well, um, it's a wonderful photograph of her in Korea in an army jacket. And uh, when you think that this woman was photographed by the greatest photographers of the 20th century, 
and uh, her favorite photograph. And it says on the back in, in, in her I I unmistakable handwriting, this is my favorite one. And she kept moving it from purse to purse. It was never far from her. And it was her favorite photograph because it just showed such pure joy and, 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 and appreciation. A sentimental and a smart lady, Sam. Yeah. Thank oh, you absolutely. so much. Sam Kashner in the October issue of Vanity Fair. It's going to hit newsstands in New York and Los Angeles tomorrow and the rest of the country next week.